Thank you for choosing to listen to this message by our pastor, Brother Mike Beachy. Let us join now with the saints of God with open hearts and minds into a service already in progress. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I know they've got it spelled S-U-N light, but you know what? The S-O-N light is what makes us free. Amen. 
Amen. All right, you can be seated. Go see if Brother Willie Holt would uh, come on down and maybe lead us in a song or two this morning. While Brother Willie comes, like I say again, appreciate all of you that's come this morning. I've been having some good services around here. Amen. Uh, Lord's been blessing. And how many feels like the Lord's been speaking to your heart? I tell you, the Lord's been speaking to our hearts and sharing some wonderful uh, present day truth with us. And, uh, you know, it keeps my heart encouraged. Amen. Keeps me enthused in the things of God. Amen. Proud and thankful to be a Christian this morning. Let's give Brother Willie a good old hand this morning. He's coming. Brother, Brother Willie. Praise the Lord. Appreciate the Lord this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, let's see here. Brother Jimmy like to catch me at the wrong times a lot of times. <laughs> I do appreciate the Lord. I thank God for his mercy and his kindness, his goodness. God has been a blessing to all of us. I mean, within our growth, we've been slow, but yet in start, the Lord has been patient with us. And I thank God for it, you know. Since this is Mother's Day, I like to say I thank the Lord for my wife. Uh, she's the mother of six kids, and eleven grandkids, and two greats. <laughs> thank God for. It. Oh, praise the Lord! Uh, let's see. Can we just try this song on one thirteen? Are you washed in the blood? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's all stand as we sing together this one. <laughs> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? In the blood of the Lamb Oh, are you washed In the blood In the soul-cleansing blood Of the Lamb Are your garments white Are they white as snow Are you washed In the blood of the Lamb Are you Walking daily by the Savior's side Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless Are they white as snow Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb When the bridegroom comes Will your robe be white Pure and white in the blood of the Lamb When your soul be ready for that man, John Brown, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed in the blood, in that soul and in blood of the Lamb? Are your garments washed? Are they white? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb Way aside the garment That are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain for it For the soul by the Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Oh, are you washed? Are you washed in the 
blood of the Lamb When the bridegroom comes On your road be white Pure and white In the blood of the Lamb When your soul be ready For that mansion Oh, be white In the blood of the Lamb you are in the blood, in the slow cleansing blood of the Lamb. For your God is partly solid, white as snow. How you are in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, are you what? blood of the Lamb. There's the fountain is flowing for the soul's unclean. I'll be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, are you washed in the blood Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's try page uh, 97, Come and Die. Praise the Lord. We're waiting to dine at the Master's table today. I believe you got a good meal prepared for us. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people to come and dine. With his land of healing plain and supplies our every need. Oh, it's we who suck with Jesus all the time. Oh, come and dine. The master's calling. Come and die. You may feast that Jesus table all the time. He will bed the mother to turn the waters into wine. Do the hungry cause now come and die. Though the disciples came to land, let's obey and Christ your man. For oh, the master called to be to come and dine. There they found their hearts to fly, bread and fish upon the fire, till his sin is by the hungry every time. Oh, come and dine, the master called, come and dine. You may be that Jesus came all the time. Turn the waters into wine To the hungry call is now coming down Soon the Lamb will take his bride To be ever at his side All the host of heaven will assemble be Oh, it will be a glorious sight All the saints and spotless white and he's Jesus, he will be eternally. So 
coming down The master call is coming down You made me that he was there all the time He was there the mother to turn the water into wine Till the hungry call is now coming down Soon the lamb will take his bride to be ever at his side All the hosts of heaven will assemble thee For this be a glorious sight All the saints in spotless white And his dream be the prince eternally So come and dine, the master call Come on and dine You may be that eagle tail all the time He will bed the mother to Turn the water into wine This is a Coming down So coming down The mountain's calling Coming down You may be That he's a tail All the time He will bed the mother to Turn those waters into wine Till the hungry call of thee Come and die Amen. You come to dine this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Okay, let's see, Brother uh, Michael, do you have the basket this morning? We'll give everybody an opportunity to share with the Lord this morning, and uh, maybe while Brother Michael is uh, coming up here, we'll get him to uh, take this back to Brother Roger. And uh, last night, Brother Kenny and Sister Michelle and uh, Brother Roger and Sister Charlotte, I think Sister Beverly, is that right, went over to the hospital. They go every other Saturday evening and uh, have services there and the uh, Lord blesses them in a, in a special way. So maybe Brother Roger can just kind of fill us in on what went on last night. Amen. Brother Roger. Praise the Lord. I want to say it's good to be here today and like always, it's always a wonderful joy to come to the house of the Lord and to see what God is doing. And last night we did have a, a, a wonderful time at the hospital when people first started coming in and as you begin to see the different one come in, you know, I thought this is going to be very interesting tonight. But it's like going down the road, riding uh, through a subdivision or uh, country road, you'll see a house, and this house might be looking broke down. Windows might be broken. Shutters might look like they need some repair. And you kind of judge the people inside the house. You think, you know, there must be some people that they're not too pleasant to be around. But then when you meet the people in the house, you find out there's some very wonderful people that may not have the understanding or the ability to do like we do. And that's where it is at the hospital. You see a lot of the people come in there. And looking at them, you think, you know, you would think it may be a lost cause. But as Brother Kenny ministered the word and the word go forth, you begin to see the potential that some of them have when the Spirit of the Lord begin to move. And you see some of them that has such great gifts, such wonderful anointing, such talent. And as they begin to bring forth that, like there was one lady, you, you can tell that she has church background and background and and she's really felt touched to the Lord. She began to sing this song, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, don't leave me. Holy Ghost, don't leave me. And as she got into this song, she really got into it, and she was really enjoying it and, and began to feel the, the singing that she was doing. And knowing we're not having much time, and she was going on and on and on. And I told my wife, I said, you stop clapping, maybe she'll quit singing. <laughs> But anyhow, she did a great job, and she was so blessed that she gave an offering. She wanted to give something in the offering to the Word. 
And there was another lady there. She wanted to sing. And she began to sing that song, His Eyes on the Spur. I tell you what, and it was, it was amazing to see the talent that she had. But you see these people that has these great talent and these great anointing, and you see that they've been trapped by spirit. The spirit has, has them trapped in a body, and they can't be used of God. But when someone comes and ministers to them and give them an opportunity to use that talent from God that God has given them, it really makes a definitely bless, bless their heart. And they begin to get into the service. And all the, the demon spirit that will be there that would hinder the service, seem like God just moved them out. And you just have a wonderful, a wonderful time. When, and when the Lord take over and take control of the service. And like I want to say, pray for those people. Pray that God would help them. Help them find him. And there was one man there. And he was really just starting to get into the service at the end. And uh, he was... You know, going right along, just amen, and kind of witness to what Brother Kenan was saying. And that one man was there with some poem, and he brought forth some good poem that he had wrote. And in those, behind those confinement walls, there's some great talent, there's some great ability that if God could reach down and get a hold of those people hard in life and change their life, they can really be a blessing to someone. You know, and I always think what a wonderful opportunity it is to spend an hour with these people here to kind of feel their infirmity. You, you see people that are locked up in hospitals and <clears throat> off on home and jails and different places. But when you can go there and spend an hour or two and, and feel what they are going through and, and to share a little time with them and to let them know that God has not left them, that he has not forsaken them, that if they'll turn to him and be sincere, then he will show them that he's there and he's concerned about them. So keep them, keep them in prayer and keep us in prayer. The, the different one, if anybody that have an opportunity, they would like to go sometime, maybe one time, you know, you'll get to see what God is doing and how those people are being touched. And the staff, they're really blessed when we get ready to leave. They, they're so thankful that we come and spend that hour with these people and uplift their spirit. Because some of them, you know, the kind of thing they've been through, the life that they spent, they need some encouragement. They need somebody to let them know there is hope, there is a way that if they are turned and follow that way, there is hope for them. Thank you. And I hope you'll remember to pray for uh, Brother Kenny and his wife and Brother Roger and his wife, Sister Beverly. They're the faithful uh, troop that goes with the regularity. And uh, they go representing us. Not only do they represent the Lord, but they go representing us. And uh, we need to keep them in prayer. And another thing, too, is uh, they like to take Bibles. They like to take Bibles. And the folks up there are always needing Bibles, wanting Bibles. So... Uh, uh, we was going to get a little thing put in the back just for Bibles. Maybe sometime uh, put a, for a few dollars, a few cents or something in, uh, toward Bibles because, uh, you know, they usually, uh, they usually, Brother Roger buys the Bibles. Sometimes uh, different ones they contribute. And, but uh, that's something that's always in need is Bibles for that hospital up there. And, uh, you know, I've told this before, but, uh, you know, the Kenny and him may not never realize the good they're doing but it's like the the person that uh, told me that when they were in jail and uh, they were at the top of the steps in a cell and they'd watch this little old lady Sunday morning, kind of about crippled. She had to take one step at a time, come up those steps. And she'd come up there on Sunday and preach to those fellows in prison. And they'd cuss at her and spit at her and tell her that they didn't want to hear what she had to say. But uh, this man, you know what, it did uh, something to him. And he got converted. And he started preaching the gospel. And he started running revivals. And I mean, he would preach like the world was on fire. And, uh, you know, I'm here today to testify it works. And uh, he went to, um, 
years later, several years later, he was back in that same little town where he was uh, in jail. And he went to a church, ran a little Bible, and he said, he said, I was in jail in this very town one day. And a uh, little old lady used to come to the jail up there where I was at. And uh, come to find out that little lady was in the church that very service. She got discouraged and decided she wasn't going to go to the jail anymore. But when she heard that and realized she saw some fruits of her labor, she said, praise God, I'm going to keep on going to the jail. <laughs> So um, you never know. They may win. Uh, uh, they don't go. Uh, they don't win but one person. You never know. That person may wind up being a powerhouse for God, and you know, win soul, become a world evangelist. So you never know. You never know. So let's keep them in prayer. Amen. All right, Sister Michelle. Maybe you can get the lady folks and uh, you know, sing maybe a song or two. We just move right along. How many came to hear God's word this morning? Amen. We like the singing and we love the testifying. But it's God's Word that builds us up, gives us strength, and uh, faith comes by hearing that Word of God. Amen. All right. Let's give the lady folks a hand. Questions become clear for that sacred moment. No doubt can interfere in the prayer.
Trust you came with a real hunger this morning, and you know what? Like those little birds, you know, we've got some little brand new birds on our porch, and we watch those little birds. They're just there all the time waiting for something to eat. You know, we need to be like those little birds this morning. We come to church, we need to be saying, here am I, Lord, feel me, feel me. What you got for me this morning? Amen, because he's got something good for us. Don't you believe that? Amen. Let's give the Lord a good old hand this morning. Let's give Brother Michael a good old hand. Lord bless you, Brother Michael.
Love the Lord this morning. Let's just sing that little chorus. Just another touch, Lord, from you. Amen. Is that all we need? Everything's going wrong and backwards and every which way. All we need is another touch from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It just fixes it every time. Just another touch, Lord, from you to help me with the trials I go through and though dark maybe the night I can't see your ray of light when I feel another touch Lord from you oh just Another touch, Lord, from you To help me with the trials I go through And though dark may be the night I can see your ray of light when I feel another touch, Lord. Just sing it one more time. Oh, and just another touch. Oh, can you love him this morning? Can you just slip up your hands and worship him? Help me with the trials I go through. No dark may be the night I can see a ray of light when I feel another touch Lord. I want you to pray with us this morning. Sister Samantha sent me a note. Kevin hurt his back yesterday and said he was hurting worse than when he had his wreck. So I just want us to pray and ask the Lord to move in his behalf. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer, can we pray? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house with your people, Lord, on this wonderful, beautiful day, dear God, this day of significance, dear Lord, as we come together to celebrate Mother's Day. And dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come together in your presence. We come together in your name, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, I just ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you would supply each and every need here this morning, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would move in behalf of Kevin even now, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, move by your Holy Spirit. Lord, as even as we felt, even while all the way across the ocean, Lord, as we was in India and we felt the presence, the quickening, dear Heavenly Father, the witness, dear Lord, that you was going to move in his behalf, dear Lord. We ask that you move in his behalf even now, dear Heavenly Father, that you would touch his back, touch his body, touch his spirit, dear Heavenly Father. May he feel the presence of Almighty God moving in his behalf even now. Lord, and we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Speak to our hearts, uplift our spirits, and may we feed from the throat of grace this morning, dear Heavenly Father. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Appreciate singing and appreciate those songs Brother Willie was singing. I tell you, I believe somebody was starting to feel like they was washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Anybody been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. And uh, so that's, it's wonderful, you know. I, Begin to feel that. Amen. I, I like to sing when you feel it. That all right? So I said it ain't all in feeling. I know, but uh, it, the feeling sure does help. You know? I mean, how would you like to go through life without any feeling? <laughs> Amen. Uh, I like to feel this old heartbeat. <laughs> it makes me know something's still working. When it quits, we got a problem. We got a problem. Amen. And, uh, and this is Mother's Day. I tell you, it's good to have all the mothers here with us this morning. And, and uh, I don't know if we're supposed to ask which is the oldest anymore or, or which is the youngest, you know. But uh, we're just glad and we just thank God for our mothers. Amen. Can we honor our mothers? 
Man. Amen. My mother's gone on to be with the Lord, and as I say so many times, uh, we have another reason to make heaven our home. Amen. I look forward to a glad reunion day. Amen. We've been promised that. Paul said we have this hope. We encourage one another with this. Amen. So it, it, it's wonderful, and it's so wonderful to have each and every one. And we do have some flowers back there on the table. You can take one uh, as you go out. Uh, mothers and the ladies, they can take one, one of the flowers as they leave. Uh, just a little token of appreciation or love and uh, for you and your service and, and what you're doing here in this life. And uh, I said the other night, you know, sometimes we feel like maybe Mama's let us down or maybe she hasn't let us down. I said, but one thing about it, Mama brought you into this world, and you can thank God for that, and you can thank her for that because if it wasn't for Mama, you wouldn't be here. Amen? So we thank God for mothers. Amen? And that's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, so I, I don't know exactly uh, which way the Lord allowed us to go. There were some things on my heart. I mentioned something the other night, and uh, I don't know if the Lord allowed us to maybe to get into just a couple things. I believe it would be uh, heartwarming and heart-stirring. And the Word of God always is, ain't it? Amen. It always is. It makes you just makes you want to come back for more, don't it? Amen. Right, Brother Jimmy was talking about that little bird. I. I got some cats around the house, and I don't know about you, but, you know, when that's time to eat, I mean, you might as well feed them. I mean, you might, I see some head, you might as well feed them, because if they're going to be under your feet, they're going to be, they're going to annoy you, they're going to bother you, they're going to, I mean, you know, and, and you might as well feed them. And uh, that's just the way it is. So, you know, I, I hope this morning we come with a hungry heart, amen. Because, you know, there's not a whole lot I can do for you, but there ain't a whole lot that he can't do for you, Amen. Matter of fact, there's not anything he can't do for you, amen. Totally transform you, amen. Totally transform you, I mean, into a, a new creature. I mean, sometimes we get tired of what we see in the mirror, don't we? Yeah, we do. If you don't, believe me, the others do. <laughs> you know, but you, thank God, he's changing all that. The light of the glory of his unveiled face, and he's changing me. He's changing us, Amen. From glory to glory, being changed from glory to glory, and it's such a wonderful thing. And appreciate the brethren coming out. As, as you see, we was able to pull some markers, and so we we cleared cleared some woods <laughs> and uh, cleared some things out a little bit so that we could uh, kind of see what we have here, and we're going to see if we can squeeze a little room here, and, and, and we need some facilities here, so we need some offices and things, so we're going to see if uh, we can't look into that and see if, what we can do and uh, be in prayer also there's there's another track of land right here we don't need the whole track of land we just need this end of it and uh, you know how many believe God can give it to us you know and if that would be his will of course if it wouldn't be his will then we want to do his will of course in our, our natural you know it'd be great to just stretch it out a little bit and all the way to, you know be great it'd be great to clear these woods all the way to the highway you know, but, uh, you know, but be in prayer about that. We're going to look into it. We're going to check into it and see what may come of it. And I and, uh, found out, you know, that, Lord, you know, we, you have to make a step. You know, you have to make a step, you know, you have to make a move. And so, so many times, you know, he said he would supply our need. And sometimes we have to create a need. Create a need. It's all right if it's for God, ain't it? Somebody say it's his business, so you know it's it's his uh, you know it's his uh, responsibility and priorities to to fund it and take care of it and bring in the workers and things that you need and supply you the things you need and so we just you know it's his work, amen. We're just managers here. We just kind of help manage things and help look after things and and but he's the owner of this whole corporation, amen. So that's wonderful, amen. He is the head to this body. I'm glad we got a head this morning. Amen. At the head is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're just members in particular of the Lord Jesus, and we're part of that body. And we just want to fit, and the Bible speaks of every joint compact together and every joint doing that part that it's supposed to do, and each one supplying its part. And, and uh, you know, when, when, when the 
little toe is hurting, the whole body's kind of in pain, ain't it? It just kind of draws the attention. It's kind of hard to enjoy a whole lot when, you're, when your toe's hurting. And, uh, so that's the way it is. And so it's, it's imperative, you know, that, that we uh, function properly, amen? Because when you're not functioning properly, you make the whole body hurt. Amen. So function properly, all right? <laughs> amen. If you're part of this body, function properly. And I'll try to do my part to function properly. And so I don't bring pain to you, and you don't bring pain to me. And we'll all love each other and work together, won't we? Man, there's, I, I, I don't know, sometimes you get to looking at the Scripture, and there's so many things. And I and, uh, was talking about seeing the Lord face to face. And uh, it may seem a little bit unusual to start over here where the scripture here is, but I thought maybe I would uh, begin in Exodus chapter 32. Like I say, this may seem unlikely, but and we may end up reading quite a bit of scripture before we finish here, but I think that will be all right. Man, I say so many times, this is, this is my notes. <laughs> Amen, and the uh, Lord helps us. So it, it's so wonderful, so wonderful. So let's just begin in, in Exodus chapter 32, and maybe we'll begin at verse 1 and just see what the Lord may speak to our hearts this morning. Uh, one thing he said, you know, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to being filled. Man, sometimes we, we get filled up and we're running over and, and then we go out and have to deal with this world and things. And it seems like we kind of get drained down just a little bit. But thank God we know where the filling station's at. <laughs> Amen. And, and somebody was talking about the price of fuel and, oh, it's high. But I tell you what, this here we have, Jesus said, come to this fountain and you can drink of this water and you can drink freely, amen. Somebody else has paid the price. We can pull up to the pump and fill up. Amen, ain't that great? Jesus Christ has paid the price so that we can, we can get a fill up. And, uh, and, and that's pretty expensive nowadays, but he still covered the price. He, he covered it all, amen. So, Lord is so good to us, so good to us. Let's say once again, it's good to have each and every one of you here. We'll just begin at verse 1, Exodus chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molded calf. And they said, These be thy gods. O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw it, he built an altar. He built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, 
Let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief? Did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both of their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it in fire and ground it to powder and strewed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. Whereas for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it in the fire, into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. There fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up unto the Lord, peradventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, Blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because... They made the calf which Aaron, which Aaron made.
And, you know, you, you look at this, I, I, I kind of see the nature here uh, as you go down a little bit. I can't help but maybe chuckle just a little bit. God, he, he come to Moses and he said, your people. Moses, he begins to pray to God and he says, it's your people. And when he gets down there, Aaron, he, he's talking to Aaron, what are you doing? He said, well, you know this people. And everybody's trying to pass the buck here, it seems like. You know, it ain't my people, it's your people. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we like to say, well, that's my family. But sometimes we say, I don't know them. They don't belong, they don't belong to me, you know. Ain't no kin of mine, you know. And, and that's the way it was here. Old Moses, he, he done got upset. And the Lord had got upset. But we see here a beautiful pattern of what has happened even in the day that we're living in. And that's the reason I wanted to read this because to see the Lord face to face, I believe we have to understand that there was two covenants. And we have to understand that there was an Old Testament and a New Testament. And uh, we have to understand that this table, it said that they were wrote on both sides. Now, you know, I, I don't know the way we plaque them out. You know, we got these nice stones and, and we got it, you know, and it's on the left side and on the right side. But, you know, I don't know if he was talking about on both sides because, you know, in the book of Revelation, it said it was sealed on the back side. Amen? And I believe there was a front and a back. I, I happen to think maybe there's a front and a back because as we go along here, that's what we want to talk about because we realize that Moses had to do with the back side. Amen? And that Jesus had to do with the front. And if we look at this, you know, but we see here as he's dealing with the people, and let's, let's just look a little bit of what has happened here because that they found himself in the wilderness, and what did they do? What has happened to the man of God? Where did he go? And that's, that's a lot of times I can't help but think that maybe we're in, in that somewhat in that condition even in the day that we're living in. You know, a lot of people, we grew up maybe uh, listening to certain men of God, and, 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 and then, you know, as they've passed on and gone on, then people kind of wander back to themselves, uh, go back to their own ways. Bible says in, in the book of Judges, you go over there and read, and, and God would raise up a leader, and they would uh, uh, follow that leader, and they would, they would come and preach to them, and they would repent, and, and, and they'd straighten up for a while, and, and just as soon as that leader was gone off the scene, the Bible says it, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Amen? And you say, well, what's that got to do with us today? Well, I can tell you today that every man does that which is right in his own eyes. It has a whole lot to do with what we're doing today. And, uh, but we see that, and so here we see it maybe as we bring it forward, and there was people that followed Brother Branham, and, and the Lord took him off the scene, and they look, and, well, you know what, we don't know what's become of this man of God, you know, and, and, and it didn't work out the way we thought, and every man began to do that which was right in his own eyes. They did begin to do their own thing. And, you know, and the same thing happened. We began to follow Brother Pike and raised up a generation, and, and here it was, and everything was going fine, but then, then these things happened. The Lord took Brother George on, and, might say it's took him on into that mountain, on into that Canaan land, and then everybody, well, you know, we don't know what's become of the man of God. You know, God, you know, there were some men of God, and, you know, there, and in time past, it's been great. There's been some great men of God, but, you know, I just don't know about today, you know, and so every man does that which is right in his own eyes. But as we look at this church world, we see this, and here was Aaron, he was the priest, and he was the one that worked hand in hand there with with Moses, and, and they come to him and say, we don't know what's happened to this man of God. And, and so he said he began to take an offering, amen? You know, if we're going to have revival, if we're going to have a church, if we're going to be a pastor, we're going to be an evangelist, we've got to learn how to take an offering, amen? So he, he said, well, well, let's take an offering. And, and you know, if, if you noticed, it says there at the first that he carved and he made a golden calf. But when he got over there telling, telling Moses what happened, he said, I threw it in the fire and a golden calf come out. Uh, ain't that the way we are? You know, Lord, I, I, I just don't know. You know, I, I started out and I, I thought, but, you know, I just thought, and this is what happened, you know. It, uh, it's like we didn't have anything to do with it. And he says, you know what, my word's been here the whole time. My word has never left. I've never left you without a witness. Amen. I've never left you without a witness. So he says, you know, what, what seems to be the problem? But see, it says that they offered burnt offering and peace offering. But you know what? They was in the wrong frame of mind to offer anything for a sin offering, wasn't they? See, where, where was that about? And, and what did Moses do? Why? Because they were committing a sin. God's up here, and he's a great spirit, and he's telling Moses, he's giving him these commandments, and what's he telling? Don't, y'all shall not have any graven images before me. 
I am, I am a, a God. I am the great spirit. I, I, I don't want no images because, you know, we're not worshiping the sun and we're not worshiping the moon and we're not worshiping this serpent over here or this star or the trees or, or the animals. We're not worshiping these things because that is not the image of God. I've got a specific image that I plan to come into. I plan to come in an image, but that's not that image. So I don't want no graven images. There's not going to be but one image, and that's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to be that expressed image of God. So don't be building no images. And that's what we tend to do a lot of times. We build images. Sometimes we'll make idols, and sometimes we'll make idols out of the men of God. But it, there wasn't but one expressed image of God. But as we go on and we look and we see this, as Moses gets past this and he gets over here and in chapter 33, he, he sees this here and, and he begins to communicate with God and, and he's getting ready to make this crossing. But he, then we look over here and, and if you look, maybe in verse 10, 9 to 10, uh, we could have read the whole chapter. But it, it, it says, and it came to pass in verse 9, as Moses entered into the tabernacle of the cloudy pillar, descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. You see, he says he spoke to Moses face to face. He spoke to him. Let's get this clear now. He, he spoke to him face to face. That didn't mean Moses seen him face to face. He spoke to him. He spoke to him face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Well, now I tell you what. You know, Moses, you know, naturally speaking, there has probably never been a man of God that, or a man that God has used that has influenced the world any more than Moses. I mean, the most powerful man in, in history. You think about it. Other than the Lord Jesus Christ, which no wonder he said it was to be a prophet like unto. Because that's what it represented. That was, that was the Lord of the Old Testament. Amen? But that's the part we want to get to because, you know, a lot of people are still living in the Old Testament. They're still living in that Lordship part. But there is another part that comes to where there is a Christ. That's where we're getting to as to getting face to face. Amen? This is our goal. This is where we're headed. And, and we see this, but he said, the Lord spake unto Moses. Moses, there wasn't any man in all the earth like Moses. He said, he's meek. And he said, you know what? I, I might talk to these others this way, but I'm talking to Moses face to face. Talking to him as a friend. As a man speaketh unto his friend, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Oh, that's beautiful. Ain't that great? There it is, as that Christ, he, he's still interceding there for you and I. He, ne he never left that tabernacle. Thank God for that blood on the seat of atonement. Amen. Just to tie some things in here. Think about it. Moses said to the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. Them in whom will... And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. This is amazing because Moses, he would, he would contend with the Lord. He told the Lord over there, God, you can't do evil like that. You can't destroy this people. Imagine that. He's talking to God. Lord, you can't bring this evil upon your people. I mean, what are the Egyptians going to say? What are they going to say? What are they going to do? You know what? God listened to him. God listened to Abraham, didn't he? He said, I'm going down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, what? Lord, if there's 50 down there, would you spare them? Don't you know God knows who to go to? 
don't you think that maybe some, that even in the day that we're living, he still might be speaking to some. Somebody coming to some saying, you know what, I'm bringing destruction. Oh, and he knows that the righteous heart's going to be smitten. He's, oh, Lord, can you, can you grant just a little bit more mercy there? Can, can, what if there's 50? What if there's 40? What about 30? 20? 10? Is that where he stopped? Did he stop at 10 or 5? 10? He couldn't even find 10. He didn't even get 5. It wasn't before. And one of them turned back. See, God, he, he wants somebody to intercede. Why? Because he's a merciful God. He wants you to plead the cause. He wants you to intercede. Amen? And Moses said, bring up the people. You know me by name. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Translation for that rest is peace. They were down there making a the peace offering, but they was going about it the wrong way, wasn't they? Oh, but when he comes, and he'll give you peace. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known? Here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. You found grace in my sight, Moses. My, what a wonderful thing here. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Oh, Moses, he just kept pushing, didn't he? <laughs> you know, ain't that the... He just kept pushing. God said, okay, I'll give you this. All right, that's good, Lord. How about this here too, man? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that's great, Lord, but now I, I want to see your glory. Wait a minute. This mercy and grace that God has given, is that not good enough? Moses, man, I tell you, no wonder God chose Moses. That's what he wanted him to do. That's what he wants. He wants us to hunger, to thirst, to push, you know, to, to reach out. He wants to fill us with the fullness of God. And he loves it when we just keep pulling. When he says, okay, I bless you today, and we come back. Lord, that was just that. I, I want some more of you today. That was good for yesterday, God, but what about today? I, I want to keep moving. I want to keep growing. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. If it gets a little warm, y'all can turn the AC on or up or whatever needs to be done. Okay. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now, I tell you, Moses had done seen a lot of stuff. He had done been up in the mountain. He had done put out a tabernacle. He had done seen a lot of things. And, and he's still pressing. Man, don't get satisfied with the things of this world. Man, don't get, I mean, these things are going to pass away. They're going to fade. They're going to disappear. They're going to vanish. They're going to be like a vapor. They're going to be gone. But be like Moses. Be like Moses. He kept pressing. He kept pressing. He said, let me see your glory. And he said, 
I will make my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. I can't show you my face, Moses. It's not that time yet. It's not that time. You have to do it the Lord part. You are the backside of the book. You have to do it that law. Moses, I, I tell you what I will do. I'm not going to let you see my face because you see my face, you can't live. You see my face, you can't live. Oh, ain't that great? Don't you want to see the face of God? Somebody says, and die. Absolutely. Amen. I die so that I can live. Because that's where life is at. And he said, thou canst not see my face. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Oh, ain't that great? I've got you standing on a rock, Moses. Got you standing on a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. My face. You're not going to see it, Moses. Why? They built a calf. What was that? Oh, they thought, well, what are we sacrificing? We're, we're sacrificing these oxen and these cattle and the calves and the sheep and the goats. So we'll make an image like that because we're making the sacrifice to cover our sins from year to year. The blood of, of the beast is being spilt. Why? Well, if we go back over here just a little bit, there is a reason why. Over in Genesis 4 and 14, there is a reason. God has driven Cain out. Now, we may tag this on Cain, but what has happened? God drove man out of the garden. Today, you hear people saying, Oh, it's man. He's made in the image of God. No man was made in the image of God, but he fell to the image of the beast. He fell from that there state of the Son of God. And he fell to a beastly image. That's why they sacrificed beast. But he says, and, and, and even in verse 13, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from, the, and from thy face shall I be hid. I'll be a fugitive and a vagabond, and all that find me will kill me. You've driven me out from your face. <clears throat> what is it? It's the presence of God. See, we think a lot of times, we think of face. But you know, sometimes we have meetings face to face. But then again, as to the face, that's the frontal part. We might scale the face of a mountain. We may, you know, as Moses, he was speaking as to face to face. Sometimes we face off in war. There's all kind of maybe scenarios we could use as to face. But he told Moses here, he wanted to see the glory of God. But he said, you can't see it because that has not, that debt has not been paid yet, Moses. That sin debt has not been paid. You can't see the face. You can't see the glory of God yet. You're still on the backside. And that's why that thing was sealed on the backside. But if it was sealed on the backside in the book of Revelation, when he opened it up, I believe he opened it up to the front side. 
He used that backside to conceal. The Bible says that he hides himself in darkness. But he's light. I'm going to say that image. What was it? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. You've hid your face from me. Yeah, because there was a fire. You listened to another mind. And when you listened to this other mind, what did it do? It brought death. It brought death. You eat of a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And because you've eaten of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, then it brings an intellectual concept and it brings death. And the letter killeth. That's what Moses had to do with. He had to do with that law and it came forth and it kills, but the spirit makes alive. So we see this. Seeing the backside. Moses, you can see the backside. This is that build the tabernacle according to the pattern that you saw in heaven. He gave him this pattern. He laid it out. And we can see how beautiful it shows the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we travel, as we journey, there is a journey that's taking place. And I want to go over to the New Testament. Uh, there was another scripture. I was looking at it this morning. Y'all know the scripture. It's that we look through a glass darkly. But then, it says now, we see through a glass darkly. It's right here. I'm in the right place. Didn't know it. In 1 Corinthians 13, this chapter right here brings us to this facial part. I believe it is. I believe it brings us to where we can see God as He is. Now, was it in that image, that natural image that they beheld? Jesus, speaking to the apostles, talked about the Father, and Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Philip, have I been so long with you, and you ain't know me? But was it as to that natural image that they seen? No, there's more to it, because there was a lot of people that seen that natural image. It didn't do nothing for them. But there was some that could look beyond that veil. There was some that could get past the writings of Moses. There was some that could get past that and look beyond the veil even as Peter did. And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. What did he say? Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. That was my father. That was that there eternal spirit. What is it? Here comes that sacrifice. That sacrifice had to be paid. Before, what? We could come into this glory. Moses, you can't see my glory. But I tell you what, I'll put you over here and I'm going to pass. And you can see the backside of the book. You can see that first covenant. I mean, no, we had to have the first covenant. We never got the second. They did. When he come down, he broke it. Why? Because 
it took that second to make the whole. To make us whole. To redeem back. Because man was still in a fallen state. But this, this is so wonderful because when we think of this, what is that there? This glory, this special part. What's it say? In chapter 13. Now I'm just going to read this whole chapter because it, it's so imperative. It's so essential. It is, it is so necessary. Without it, we're lost. See, we talk about this and, and maybe, you know, we, we think about these things and people talk about, you know, well, if I just make it to heaven. See, we got some people that are not just wanting to make it to heaven. We got some people that want to be a part of the bride. See, and this is what we're talking about. Going on to a full reward. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity, em, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Because when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Why? Because charity is love and love is God. God is love. So without it, we're empty vessels. We're empty vessels. What is this? This is that glory part. And whom he has predestinated, he has sanctified, he has glorified. How could he do that? Moses, he didn't let him see his glory. But we're on this side of Calvary. What is that their face? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's stepping beyond that veil. It's going into that inner chamber. It's seeing Jesus for who he is. It's seeing God for who he is, for what he was and what he forever shall be. It's seeing him for who he is. Now, a lot of times we like to think about seeing ourselves for who we are, but no, that's not important. It's that we, we're not going to see what we are until we can see who he is. Because without him, we're nothing. We can do nothing, but we have got to come to the place that that revelation, that facial part of Christ can be opened up so that we can see who he is. Because outside of that, we're nothing. But when we can realize who he is, that's what becomes important. And as great as a, a, a man as Moses was, I say, there was no man that has influenced mankind like Moses. And yet, 
the law and the prophets, these prophets are under John and, and, and all of these prophets and John was the greatest, but yet he that is in the kingdom is greater than Moses. The least. The least. Why? Because they hadn't come to that yet. They hadn't come to that yet. So I they without us can't be made perfect. Because it takes both parts to make the whole. What is that? That's that redemption of the body. That redemption of the body. The bar mitzvah. The adoption. See, the adoption. That's where it all comes together. Another scripture I want to read. Maybe just a few verses here. Because there's something about this seeing him face to face. See, the Bible says that no man can see God and live. But when you begin to see the revelation of Christ, Paul said, reckon yourselves to be dead. Even as to with the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then liken yourself as into that resurrection. So we realize that that's, that's great. Because we died. We seen him. And guess what? We died. No man can see God and live. And we got a glimpse. That veil was opened up. It said the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. From the heavenlies all the way down to the earth. Jesus Christ, he stood there and said, Nicodemus, the Son of Man, which came from heaven, which is going back to heaven, and that Son of Man that is in heaven. And he said that not only that, but if you're born again, he said, you can be in heaven. You can be they that dwell in heaven. Why? Because of what he has done. That's what it's all about. That's what that there, chapter 13, is about, that charity. Because we can't see the fullness. We can't see him face to face without that charity, without that love of God. But I tell you what, when that love of God is shed abroad in your heart, oh, it'll make you love your enemy. It'll make you love them and do good to them that despitefully use you. It will make you have something on the inside. Make you feel something move when you hear Brother Willie singing and washed in the blood of the Lamb. I saw something. Somebody's believing that. Somebody believes that. Somebody believes they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Not worshiping a golden calf. Amen? We're worshiping the Son of God. We don't have any other images. What's he say in Hebrews 10? See, here come that sacrifice. Those others wouldn't work because it was of, of the beast. But I may know that Jesus wasn't born of that beast blood. He came in the image of sin, but he was not made sin. In the sin he was made sin for us, but he, not, he partook not of sin. Never at one point. Never at one time. But it was that supreme sacrifice. And he made that way. Oh, we could read the whole 10th chapter. It, it, it's just, it, it tells us what he has done for us. But listen at this. Maybe I should back up to verse 14 here. For by one offering, he hath perfected Forever, them that are sanctified. I ain't no perfect people. <clears throat> Maybe not in this world. Maybe not in the world you're living in. But in the world. In the place that I dwell. Why? That's a prerequisite. We don't let anything in but perfect folk. Boy, what kind of club you a part of? Part of that perfect club. 
We're part of that perfect church. Somebody said, if you found a perfect church, don't go. You might mess it up. Well, this is a perfect church. Why? Because he said, he didn't say, I'm going to come back and then I'm going to make them perfect. He said, I'm coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. That means somebody had been perfected before he ever came and got them. He didn't say, I'm going to come get her and take her back and clean her up and make her white as snow. No, he's already done it. Perfected. By the offering of one, hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. I'm coming back to it. Just so we nail this one down. And in, in, in Romans 8 and 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Justified people. Hey Amen. We're justified in his sight. He just, it didn't say he's going to. It said, whom he called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So I, I just don't think that. What? I'm sorry for you. But I don't know about you, but we've been talking about that spirit of Christ. We've been talking about that Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but how in the world could you have that spirit of God Almighty dwelling on the inside and not be glorified? How in the world could you not be perfected? How could you not be justified if that God Almighty is dwelling on the inside? Somewhere we're missing something. Can't be anything else. Well, I sin every day. Well, get born again. Get born again. It's free to all. To whomsoever will may come. Just get born again. That's all you got to do. He's perfected. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us after that he had said before. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart and in their minds will I write them. What is it? That was that spirit of truth that Jesus said he was going to send back. That's the spirit of Christ. Man, what's he going to do? They get their big old tablet of stone and... No, he just given us the author of the one that wrote it. Amen. Can you imagine that? That spirit that's dwelling in you is that same spirit that was standing there talking to Moses face to face. That same spirit of God that dwells inside is the same one that was standing there and it was writing on that stone and he gave it to Moses. This is what I'm talking about. That same spirit. The one that came in that form of that pillar of cloud by day and that fire by night. The one that they said, Moses, you cover you, you go talk to God. We don't want to die. That same great God Almighty is that same spirit that indwells you today. How great is your God? That spirit on the inside is that same one that came forth and said, let there be and there was. How could you be anything but perfect? I mean, he said, go offer your governors to halt the lame, the blind. Well, I mean, your governors and your presidents of this natural world, I mean, they're not just going to ride around in some old Chevrolet. Some old beater, no. They got them a big limousine. They got them a jet airplane. They get everything just right. And we think that God is supposed to just ride around in some pinto somewhere. 
Oh no, he's perfected. He perfected that house. He came in, he cleaned it up. He run the devils out. Oh, you might think you got one hid. You might have hid him over there in the closet somewhere. But I can promise you one thing, if the Holy Spirit's coming in, you're going to get him out. That devil's going to go. Old devil might get on, but it ain't going to get in. You hear me? Old flea might get on with a good dog. You might have cleaned him up. The old devil might get back on, but he ain't going to get back in. Why? There's been a seal. He said, grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you've been sealed. To what? To the day of redemption. So I said, that's what we're waiting on. I, I, see, we're not glorified. We've been, no, he said, what? To wit the redemption. To come to the understanding that redemption has already taken place in Calvary. I, I, I cannot be no more redeemed than what I already am. I cannot be any more holy than what I already am. I cannot be any more righteous than what I already am. Why? Because we ain't looking at the backside of the book. He said that he became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. That was better than what Moses got. You had to give it to Moses. He was pushing for it, wasn't he? God gave him and he, he, he just reached for a little bit more. That's what we do. Well, well, you get more. More of that understanding to wit, to comprehend what he's done. What he's done. Kind of like having these new gadgets, electronics, computer. You know, one person, you know, they peck around and they might use it to go to Craigslist and look at their Bible verses and maybe write a note. Somebody else may run a whole business off of it. See? The potential's there, but our understanding is limited. Our understanding's limited. He said that he will write this in their hearts and in their minds. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. He said he wouldn't remember them anymore. Well, who keeps bringing them back to your mind? Must be that old accuser of the brethren, huh? Must be the devil. Good to identify who's doing these things, ain't it? That way, when he comes back, you ain't got to war with that and say, wait a minute. God, man, I thought you'd forgive me for that. And he said, you lying devil, you. That's got to be you because God said he wouldn't remember it. So I know he didn't bring it back. The devil, you might bring it back, but I'm going to put it right back under the blood where it belongs. Sins and iniquities. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, Full assurance of faith. Having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We've got 
a new and living way. The letter killeth. That law came. Sin gets its strength by the law. The letter killeth, but the spirit makes alive. If I'm good enough, no. Thing is, he gave us that spirit of Christ to come on the inside because he knew you couldn't do it. That's why Paul said, the life that I now live, I live according to the faith of the Son of God. What was the faith of the Son of God? The faith of the Son of God said, you know what? I can go and I can enrobe myself in that human flesh. I can go down there and walk amongst him and be as a man. And I can make a supreme sacrifice. And I can redeem the world back to myself. And you know what? He did. And the whole world. What did it say? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. God don't see it. He said, wait a minute. It says over there that his eyes go to and fro on the earth beholding the good and evil. But I believe if you'll go check, that's in the Old Testament. Since that time, there was a new covenant that put the blood on the seat of atonement. Talking about that dispensation of grace. Do what it did. He gave grace to all. God don't see the sin. That's it. But there's some that received grace unto salvation. There's some that heard the word. They realized within themselves when they heard the preaching of the word, they realized within themselves. And they repented. And they received not just the dispensation of grace, but the grace unto salvation. Because when this grace is lifted, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see man is what they are. Beast. The Bible said that some are brute beasts made to be taken and burned. Brute beast. So I believe this morning, that he has opened that veil. I believe he's made it to where we can see him face to face. That book has been opened. It was sealed on the back side. It's become open as the revelation of Jesus Christ began to project. And as that lamb began to open them seals, things began to happen. Things began to happen. He laid it all aside so that we could see him face to face. Now we look at as to a glass darkly. But then we're going to see him face to face. You know, the more of that enlightening, the more of that understanding, the more of that face becomes clear. I said the other night, it's like seeing someone at a distance. Oh, you can tell and it looks somewhat like him. It's like, well, that, that resembles See, as they come closer and closer, as the, as the haze begins to move, the fog and the smoke and all these other, it begins to move and the face becomes clearer and clearer. Clearer and clearer. See, what was that face darkly? What was that glass darkly? That was that their image of that beast. That was that carnal reasoning. That was that intellectual veil. That was that their tree of knowledge. See, as that begins to dissipate, we begin to see him. That face becomes clear and, clear, and it comes in detail. And oh, how beautiful, how beautiful his face really is. Amen. Can we stand together? Hopefully we've said a few things this morning to enlighten your heart. Give you something to ponder on. Think about. Get in the scriptures. Dig. 
So many wonderful things that God has for His people. So many. A lot of people think, ah, you know, church, it's boring, you know, it's Bible study. You know, we do Bible study and we do Sunday school and, you know, and they tell these Bible stories and it's the same old, same old. I tell you what, you ever get a hold of that 440 volts, you find out it ain't the same old, same old. You find out there's more to it than just the reading of a few scriptures. So much more, it's words of eternal life. That's all. Just words of eternal life. Just something that will make you live forever. It's just the gift of eternal life. That's all. That's all. See, it's so wonderful and so much more than what we can ever ask or think. It goes so far beyond that. Let's sing that chorus together. The light of the glory of His unveiled face. It's the light that's changing me. Altars are open this morning. As we sing the course of two, and we'll let you go. <clears throat> Don't forget the men's meeting tomorrow evening. And also the fellowship breakfast coming up this Saturday. Now, Lord willing, if the weather's good, we'll probably have the breakfast here. We'll have it outside the church. But uh, if the weather's good, we'll just have it here instead of over at Athens. And uh, if not, we can always go over there. See how it works. But invite someone to come and like to come together and have fellowship around the things of God. Amen. Oh, the light of the glory of His the face of His the of His
this morning, shared the wonderful words of life with us. Now it's up to us. Let's don't be like uh, the man that looked in the mirror and goes away forgetting what manner of man he is. Let's take the Word of God into our heart and make adjustments accordingly. Amen. Incorporate them in, into our heart and our life. But Winston, how about uh, coming up and dismissing this morning? Would you do that? All right. Remember, as Brother Michael said, remember the service tomorrow evening, the men's meeting. Uh, we'll come together and uh, Make preparation to do more for God. How many wants to do more for God this morning? Amen. That's our calling in life is to do more for the Lord Jesus. All right, Brother Winston, Lord bless you. With bowed heads and humble hearts, Jesus, we love you we appreciate the words as you as we walk with you by the way and jesus help us and and reach out your nail scarred hands and you engraved us there that you won't forget us and jesus we thank you for the word it is the power of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus, help us. And let us believe in that word and let us get a hold to that word. Let us walk in that word. Let us believe in that word. And let us be that word so we would be the sons and daughters of the Most High God and that we would be that city that's set up on a hill, cannot be hid. And Jesus, we thank you for all the sons and daughters of God here that prays for me. And, and God, we thank you for your mighty, mighty hand. And God, we thank you for that. And we thank you how you have lifted us up by your mighty hand and God let the world know there's a God in Israel and let let them know that that you're here and you're their redeemer and Jesus we in uh, these and other blessings we pray and amen and amen
Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you have taken time to listen to this message by Pastor Beachy. We trust that you have been enlightened as well as inspired. For more messages on CD, DVD, and other resources, contact us at Post Office Box 129, Bogart, Georgia, 30622, or visit us on the web at gracetempleonline.org. May God bless you.